The following is an exclusive presentation of the Carolina Panthers and the National Football League. On this episode of the Panthers Huddle, after a close call in Tampa, the Cats will try to claw their way through the Saints and spoil the party in the Big Easy. Plus, Al Wallace is back. He breaks down what the Panthers should have in their game plan in this week's film room. And our nominee for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. See why Bradley Bozeman's impact extends far beyond the football field. Hello and welcome inside this week 14 edition of the Panthers Huddle. I'm Carla Gebhardt and after last week's loss to the Bucks, the Panthers are officially eliminated from the playoffs. However, some emerging young stars kept them in the game up until the very end and gave us a glimpse of some things to come. Bryce Young earned praise from his opponents for his performance in last Sunday's rain-soaked loss, helping the Panthers stay competitive in a divisional road game. Fellow rookie Jonathan Mingo was his go-to target in the game, with Mingo hauling in a career-high six catches for 69 yards. Combined with Chuba Hubbard's two TDs and over 100 yards rushing, the Panthers were able to keep things close, eventually taking the lead in the third quarter. However, Young gave up an interception in Carolina's final possession, helping Tampa Bay secure the win. And that's all that mattered to the first-year QB. Well, that's just on me to execute, especially in those moments. But I, I think the line played great. They did a great job. Um, you know, did a great, some great things in the run game. Um, and in the past game, too, I think they did a great job. Um, you know, again, um, I, I have to be better. We all look in the mirror. Um, we have to continue to grow. Interim coach Chris Tabor looking for his first win this weekend against the Saints. He talked to our own Darren Gann about the challenge that faces them in New Orleans and the importance of lightening the mood. We've got interim coach Chris Tabor. Chris, welcome. It's good to have you here on the show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's interim TV host, interim coach. We're, we're, we've got it going on Let's here. do it. Yeah, let's, let's do, it. do it. Obviously, you said the other day, the situation the team's in right now is something nobody would have signed up for, but here's the spot we're in. So as you kind of navigate this thing, what's kind of your approach to dealing with the team and, and talking, these, talking guys through these last five, six weeks? Uh, pretty simple, really. Try to stay in the routine. Try to respect the process and, 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 and do everything you can within the process. The Set ourselves up to win. Uh, the guys have been really good, uh, but you know each week has its new challenges. New Orleans, here they come. They got there, there's plenty on tape that that grabs your attention. So uh, if we can just stay true to who we are and, and where we're trying to go, that'll give us a chance. Looking back to last week in Tampa, it looked like there was some real progress in that run game. I mean, is that the kind of thing you feel like can be something this team can build itself upon for the next few weeks? No, I think I think we can. I thought the offensive line did a nice job. I know there's going to be times where you might only get two, maybe three yards. But if you keep doing that over the course of time, you're going to start getting big runs. And I thought the way Chuba ran the football, he did a really, really nice job. And he's a good football player. And you bring Miles in, and, and that's a nice change up right there. And then, you know, uh, Blackshear, who I think everyone thinks is just a really good kick returner, he's a good player. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came in, had a, had a nice run himself. So I, I like the, the, the tree over our backs, and I like where our offensive line, uh, how, the, how they played more of the trend. In. Looking at New Orleans a little bit, obviously a, a different challenge for this team than it was first time saw the Saints. Yeah. What do you see out of the Saints going into this week? I see a really good football team. Obviously, they've been playing really well on defense, so that'll that not only going and on the road and playing in that in that environment that that's a tough assignment right there but even defensively how they play uh, they're going to get they're going to give you some problems uh, offensively they've been scoring points i know that they they got down early against detroit but they fought right back in there regardless who's playing quarterback i mean they they have weapons on the outside so uh, we got to do a good job there and players have talked about you've tried to keep it loose how important is that over these last five weeks to kind of keep guys motivated keep guys connected to the work. I understand it's a business, mm -hmm. but I don't think you can lose sight of uh, why you play this game. You started off as a little kid because you loved it and then you just kind of kept growing. I think you never want to lose sight of that and uh, it's our job to do that. At the same time, you got to be really professional and, 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 and go through the process so that you can have and set yourself up for success. I think our guys will do that. Very good. We appreciate it. Chris Thanks Saber, everybody. 
It's December and that means the season of joy is upon us and that is certainly the case here in the Carolinas. The Panthers, the David and Nicole Tepper Foundation and Coca-Cola Consolidated held their fifth annual Joy to the Carolinas at Carowinds this week, providing some winter gear, toys, meals and a night of fun for more than 2,500 kids and their families. It's this week's Coke Community Spotlight. Thank you. We love the holidays. We love giving back, and I just think it hits differently this time of year. You have this platform, you want to be able to use it to give back. And that's what our biggest mission is just to help and fit in where we can get in. I have your card. Out. Coca-Cola Consolidated is honored to partner with the Panthers on this fifth annual Joy to the Carolinas event, where tonight we will serve more than 3,800 deserving individuals with food, clothes, shoes, and toys, and make their Christmas a little merrier. This exclusive presentation of the Carolina Panthers Television Network is brought to you in part by Bank of America. Official Bank of the Carolina Panthers. Since he's been a Panther, few have represented the keep pounding spirit better than center Bradley Bozeman. While Bozeman is certainly a leader on the field, he and his wife Nikki's tireless efforts off the field have made a much larger and more significant impact in the community. That's why the Panthers are proud to nominate Bradley Bozeman for the NFL's Walter Payton Man of the Year Award presented by Nationwide. So I'm Bradley Bozeman. This is my wife, Nikki Bozeman. Uh, and we have the Bradley and Nikki Bozeman Foundation. So we brought a little oh, for you guys. That's <laughs> awesome. Someone reached out to us and told us that this little girl was getting picked on. They were doing videos from athletes, and I was like, well, let's do one better. Let's just, it's right down the road, so we'll go down and talk to the kids. We started talking, the words started flowing, the emotions started rolling. By the end of it, we had, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13 year olds open up to two complete strangers. And we get back to the car and we look at each other, it's like, this is what we're meant to do. We've spoken to over how many students? I've lost track, over, thousands and thousands, yeah. yeah. Over like 250,000, something like that. We're here to listen to you guys. We're here to talk to you guys. And I get emotional about this because it really, really, really means a lot to me. For me, you know, I was bullied as a kid. You know, I was a big kid. They see what I am now. They don't see what I was before. And to be able to re relate with them and show them like I was just like you guys and to know that they have potential to grow up and be something special is, uh, was, was always so great. You know, we're in Baltimore, we're in our second year. Well, first you convinced me to live in an RV. <laughs> I, was, I was going to that. We were getting emails from all these kids saying, hey, we want you to come out to Austin, Texas. We want you to come out to California. We want you to come here, there, and the other. We're in this RV and we're like, what if we take this thing cross country? We started doing a little digging, do a little research, and found all the schools that wanted to talk to us. Ended up making a perfect circle all the way back to Maryland. Whether it was a big school, a small school, or a very rich school, it didn't matter. All the problems were all the same. When I say find someone that you can lean on and put faith in, it can be your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad. Lean on those people because I leaned on her. And that year, I almost hung up my cleats. I almost gave up on my dream. She's the one who talked me into coming back. I think we got to Breckenridge, Colorado, mm -hmm. and we got shut down by COVID. You know, those two or three weeks turned into, you know, about a month and a half, two months, and we were getting all these emails from the kids that we'd, we'd seen saying, hey, we don't have food. You know, all of our food came from school. You know, our parents don't have the money to supply that for us now, and they're, and they're not working. So we started a, a food drive. I got there at 11 and there was already like 200 cars in line. We just saw just the so much need in food security. You know, we wanted to find a way to be able to feed kids. The police department came and they were like, hey, can we bring this food to people in our districts? Sometimes the hardest hit people can't even get to where you are. We were like, what better way to do this than to bridge a divide between the police and the people that they serve? This is the sink snack box that is provided by the Bozeman Foundation. 
SYNC stands for Supporting Your Neighbors and Communities. The idea is that officers are physically handing a young child a box that not only addresses food insecurities, but also it creates a connection and a conversation. That's good stuff, man. Yeah. We've been doing it for a little over a year now. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So it's been, it's been a lot of people's lives, bro. Some of our friends over at the Panthers introduced us. They just made it clear, you know, right from the beginning, we want to make an impact in Charlotte. All right, so now the fun part. Building the box, filling the box, and then closing the box and then putting the labels on at the end. So we came over to the stadium and did the first packing, which was great. And since then, I think we're up to close to 17,000 boxes. Hey, hey, thank y'all for coming out. If you think about it, every one of those boxes is a child fed. What can we do to help this process right here? They're just a force. It's very much for them, you can tell about family, and about caring about the community. The great source is on the back of the box where it includes uh, QR codes. These QR codes lead the kids to specific materials for their county, so Mecklenburg County. Uh, youth development, family success programs, and several food insecurity QR codes, and then some after school enrichment programs as well. Another really cool thing that we saw, kids were taking these boxes and they would bring them to school. Like they were really proud to get those boxes and to have things to take to school because not used to that. This is a very small thing that has a very massive impact across the community. The kids have the future, so that's why we're reaching out to them. They can see like we are here to help. I love watching Bradley with Brody. Having strong families that care about each other is essential, you know, to make sure that we're taking care of our communities. Our work is nowhere close to being over. You know, he, he's going to grow up in this, whether he, he likes it or not. So, you know, I feel like we've set a pretty good example for him so far and just going to continue to do that and continue to make sure that he knows what kind of impact you can have on people's lives. And to start that ripple effect with them, for them to start a ripple effect on others, you know, that, that's what it's all about. There actually is one more page. Oh, no way. <laughs> That is so cool. Oh man, that's awesome. I'm honored. Thank you guys. I'm, I'm so honored. Um, you know, first off, this wouldn't happen without her. Nikki's one of the hardest working women I've, I've ever met. She is always putting others first and herself last. She always strives to do more and more and you know, also thanks to the, the Carolina Panthers, the, the Teppers, my teammates, the whole the community, everyone involved, Miss Kay, <laughs> and I mean just everybody. Um, this is it's truly an honor. Closed captioning for the Panthers Television Network is provided by Charlotte Eye, Ear, Nose, and Throat Associates. Helping you enjoy the sights and sounds of the NFL all season long. It's pretty much our resume, you know, 2023, how are we going to finish the game? I, I'm in the season, so I mean, heading into this game, we got good, good competition, you know, going against 41 and uh, looking forward to it. Yeah, our biggest thing is just finishing strong, you know, just uh, going out on a high note, um, focusing game by game and just finishing strong. for TD's film room and as you can see once again Thomas Davis not here but Mr. Al Wallace is here to fill in for him and Al we are looking ahead to the Saints but we are also looking back against this game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and what the Panthers did well and of course that is establishing that run game which went through Chuba Hubbard. Yeah a clear difference you look at this offensive line and what they are capable of doing moving bodies it kind of goes back to what they were so good at last season Carla just matching up one on one and producing big holes for Chuba Hubbard. So let's look at this first place play here. Uh, we see for the Panthers. We're going to just pause it right there. You see Bryce Young. He's giving a little check. He's talking to Chuba Hubbard in the backfield, communicating with his offensive line. What he's saying is that he sees this safety come down in the box. And what they want to do is try to get a best possible run to make sure they run away from that safety in the box. So we'll go ahead and 
fast forward this or play this really quickly right here and we're going to get it paused up let's just look at this blocking scheme up front okay you got bradley bozeman he's one-on-one -on, -one on the guy that's on top of him the nose guard i have to handle him i have to sustain that block look at what he does well there here you have nash jensen and you have taylor moten we'll take a look at what chuba hubbard sees here okay what he sees is this double he wants to hit this right in this a gap he wants to hit it right in there he sees the linebacker but he's expecting nash jensen to come off on that block take care of this middle linebacker but what he sees that is more attractive carla is the color on the backside. now look at your rookie right here look at your rookie Jonathan Mingo, and we see what Jonathan Mingo does. As a rookie, smart play, he's going to come and cut off this edge guy and produce a clear, beautiful hole for his running back right there up in the middle. Chuba, you know what he's going to do, Carla. He's going to finish those runs. Just absolutely beautiful for a blocking scheme for the Panthers up front. They're going to need that. And last but not least, as we told you, we're going to go all the way back to week two for the Saints, right? They use this play, the zone read for Taysom Hill. He's athletic, he's played tight end, he's played quarterback. You're not sure if he's gonna throw it or run it. All the things that he's capable of really hurt the Carolina Panthers in that week two matchup with the Saints. All right, we're gonna pause it right here. Everything they have going on, they're just gonna block down. Here's the fake right here. You're gonna see that. They're gonna try to fake this zone read, get the eyes, you see the motion and how that impacts the defensive line right there, gets everybody going. So here's your guy, Frankie Louvu. They're not gonna block him. They're gonna say, we're gonna let you go free. You decide if you're gonna chase that action going away from you or you're gonna try to defend this. They really wanna get this tight end out on the perimeter as a lead blocker for Taysom Hill. And take a look at this play again. Frankie Louvu, he's in a pickle. What do I do? All right, this is my responsibility. His job right here is the alley. CJ Henderson right there, he's going to take the outside. What Frankie is going to do is now make this a little bit muddy for CJ Henderson because he doesn't take this right away. He's going to try to make this play on his own. And you can see the reaction of Frankie Louvu after the play right there. Yeah. Man, I didn't get this <laughs> right. I should have stayed in there, made it a clear picture for my cornerback to come up, contain that. How do you prepare for him without over preparing for him though? It's all about responsibility on that zone read. If you have the quarterback, take the quarterback, touch him, hit him, make sure you get a body on him and take care of that responsibility. If you're supposed to be in the alley, get in the alley, trust your teammates around him. It's an 11 man game. It's a gap scheme. You do that. This defense has been playing well this week or this season. They'll do it again this weekend. All right, containing Taysom Hill and getting that run game going. That's what the Panthers are focused on in this game against the Saints. Al, we appreciate it. Thank you, appreciate it. We all knew last Sunday's divisional road game under a new coach was not going to be easy. And while the Panthers showed promise by fighting back to take the lead following a rain soaked first half, the game once again slipped through our fingers. Let's take a look back at our first meeting with the Bucks this season in this week's Bojangles Rewind. Cloudy overcast skies as the cannons go off in this gloomy afternoon here in Tampa. They're sitting at 1 and 10, hoping to gain some traction this week. Baker Mayfield at quarterback for Tampa Bay. Throws deep down the left sideline for Evans. Makes the catch of the 20. Bumped out of bounds at the 5 by Alex Cook. Hand off Rashad White. Charging straight ahead. And now they signal touchdown Tampa Bay. And it's 6-0 Bucks. Panthers will get the ball. And now a lot of the fans looking for cover as... Looks like it started to rain here at Raymond James Stadium. Snap Hubbard, left side, big hole, and then he slipped inside the 25-yard line. 13th play of the drive, hand off Hubbard. Right side, tackled at the five, and here comes Eddie Pinheiro to tack on three points. 7-3 in the rain, the mud. It's been a slugfest here at Raymond James Stadium. Young out of the gun fakes to Hubbard. They pick up the got open. throws down field. Mingo wide open. He's got the 20 and pushed out of bounds near the 10 yard line. And it's first down and goal Carolina. Jonathan Mingo has entered the chat. We can't get three points. This has to be a touchdown drive. Chuba again trying to fight through. They push him forward. Yes, touchdown. Sir. They've got a lead now with 504 to go in the third. We have to make sure we cover Mike Evans. That's going to be the key now. Mayfield takes the shotgun snap, sings it oh, over the middle. Out. It's complete. Evans ahead of the defense. 
He's got the 40, 30, 20, pushed by Henderson. A 75-yard touchdown to Evans. We had the lead for 10 seconds. Godwin flies sweep. 10, 5, touchdown Tampa. That was almost too easy. Tampa Bay 21, Carolina 10. We can't play hero ball right now. Methodically go down and get some points. It's fourth down and six. Play clock into single digits. Down to one, gets the snap. Young steps back, throws deep down the right side. And DJ Chark makes the catch at the eight yard line. That's the way you draw it. Gift to Hubbard, one cut, lunges into the end zone, and the Panthers with a counter punch. Young bootlegs to his right, directing traffic. He'll run, and Young gets in for two, and it's 21 to 18. Third down and short. Play fake, Young rolls to his right. He's chased, has to get rid of it, and it's fourth down coming up. Chest high snap, five man pressure. Young rolling to his right, throws downfield. He wants Thielen. Picked off by Winfield. They had two plays with third and a yard to go, and they threw on both of them. But right now, these are hard times. Panthers lose another close one. Final score, Tampa 21, Carolina 18. Unfortunately, that's all that we have for you today. Thanks for watching. If you're not coming to the game in New Orleans this weekend, you can see the Panthers take on the Saints on your local Fox station Sunday at 1 p.m. Or you can listen to the game here in Charlotte on 99.7 The Fox. So for Al Wallace, Coach Tabor, and the entire Huddle crew, thanks for watching, and we will see you next week right here inside the Panthers Huddle. Until then, keep pounding. You've been watching The Panthers Huddle. A copyrighted presentation of the Carolina Panthers and the NFL.